Champion Select, as TSM are going to open up with the first ban. Caitlyn, banned away from Apollo. Fairly standard. Yeah, Caitlyn's uh, been rising up the ranks lately. The AD carry uh, pool is actually in a bit of turmoil, and I'm hoping to see some misfortune uh, uh, around here in the North American LCS, you know, because we got a couple peaks uh, yeah. elsewhere across the world, but um, hasn't quite showed up here yet. So it does take a team to build around team fighting. Yeah. Um, but I really do like uh, the little adjustments that they've been making, especially to her uh, laning phase uh, and a lot of the burst speed that she does have. Mm -hmm. Very strong champion. We'll see if that goes through this time. Double lift, of course, a very good AD carry. But the next two bands are going to be Nidalee, taken away from Shrimp, and Vladimir from TSM. Okay, Vlad off the table. I mean, it's really difficult to ban against TSM because they've shown to be such a multi-threat team. And it's it's really just a team where you kind of have to go down the line and say, what champions are we just most scared of in general? Because TSM can pretty much carry from any lane and play most of the uh, top of the ladder champions uh, in those roles. Mm -hmm. Aurelia banned away from Ray. We got to see his Jarvan yesterday, so... Talk about champion pools. Yeah, Ray yeah. is deep here. He's uh, <laughs> had huge Fizz games. He had the Jarvan game. Uh, he even played the Shen game, the single Shen game that we've seen this season. Um, they didn't quite utilize that as effectively maybe as uh, they could have. And yeah. I definitely like to see Ray on a more damage dealing champion, you know, either bruiser, you know, backline diver or split pushing. So see what they do grab for him. Interesting LeBlanc ban here against Bjergsen. They're really, really scared. Uh, I mean, Everybody's seen uh, what Bjergsen can do to people uh, mm -hmm. on that champion. And as we said, Keen is going to be a target. Yeah. If Bjergsen earns his own advantage in mid lane, the rest of the team's very happy to back that up and pressure that champion, you know, dive whoever happens to be there for the enemy team. And Keen does not want to have uh, that coming his way. Yeah, so the first pick for TSM, you just saw Hanser sort of hover through some of Ray's picks. He's played Echo a few times, he's played Jarvan once. And uh, before finally setting in, settling in on that Rek'Sai for the first pack. So Apex, giving it the old hover right now. I think they're just trying to get our hopes up. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Rek'Sai pick has become super standard. Most pick jungler now uh, with the nerfs to Nidalee and Kindred. Although Nidalee obviously is finding herself more on the ban portion of pick bans than the pick mm -hmm. portion. Uh, but Kindred's been the one that really has started getting through with those nerfs because the nerfs hit her harder in competitive than they did in standard. Uh, there's your hope stash, Dom. Yep. Not gonna early pick a Jarvan, just threatening it there <laughs> with the hovers. Um, but yeah, the Kindred going over to round two here um, does have to focus a lot more on stacks, uh, as people have been saying. But a lot of the ones we have seen have still had really strong early games. Uh, if you give over a couple early kills there, she still really snowballs extremely hard and maybe even harder than before because yeah. the extra stacks, you can actually get over uh, the damage that she used to be at. We, we saw how effective Proxen was with it yesterday, so we'll see if Shrimp can sort of learn from that in this next set. Now, TSM have already gone for their next two picks. Swain locked in for TSM, along with Lucian for double lift. Now, this is 6-11. Yes, it is. Uh, both those champions did get nerfs, but again, they were uh, sort of even-handed nerfs, you know, mm -hmm. not too harsh, and Lucian still second most picked AD carry across the world this week. Um, it's definitely still very high up there. Um, little, they're trying to get kind of a mid-range uh, team fight skirmish comp here for TSM so far. Rek'Sai does have a lot of good early and mid game control, uh, especially farming out the other jungler. Lucian usually has a pretty strong lane, uh, as does Swain. So TSM, they're not looking to show any moments of weakness so far in their curve in this game. And uh, Apex, it looks like a little bit more uh, scaling here, but there it is. The uh, Fizz that we're assuming is going to Ray. Yeah. We've seen him play it twice already, so we are expecting it to go towards that top lane for Ray, which means that could be Swain to answer it, unless Bjergsen decides he wants that Swain for himself in the mid lane. Finally, uh, Ash locked in for Apollo. Now, we already saw it earlier today yeah. with Keith, and it was pretty good at getting picks, but it just didn't have enough damage. I do, I do like it though, because so many people have been talking about how there's a lot of opportunity to bring your crowd control and your utility from the bottom lane. Ash and Karma, if that is a support Karma, um, brings so much because you have disengage and engage in that bottom lane. Yeah. Uh, with her speed up plus the Ash arrows, a lot of control if you can, um, you know, position accordingly uh, because you have so much 
control over the speed of your team and the speed of the enemy team due to the slows that you can apply. Kind of opens up the windows for your damage dealers in your jungler and your top laner, uh, the Fizz and the Kindred mm -hmm. to work around. That's going to be hard to work around, though. Oh, the yeah. wall, even though it did get nerfed to three seconds, still very difficult uh, to deal with. Yeah, the damage didn't really get touched that much, but TSM for their next picks. They're going to take Azir and Bard for Bjergsen and Biofrost. That's going to put that Swain in the top lane up against Ray's Fizz. Yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting uh, matchup there. I think Ray feels pretty confident in that. But again, that's one that really swings with junglers. Swain, everyone always cries about eyes. Ah, you know, bully in the lane phase. He's so annoying now. It's too easy for him to CS with the Crow. Uh, but he still doesn't have escapes. So yes. this is a guy waddling around. He's hobbling with his cane up in the top lane. It's a long <laughs> lane. Go gank him, or, or at least get you know some vision uh, applied there for your jungler. And uh, you can definitely uh, turn that lane around in your favor. Ray's definitely apt to do that on the Fizz as well. And there comes Keen Zillion once again, going to allow Ray to dive to the back line. We saw it before, enabling the Jarvan. Now yeah. it's just going to be the same thing on Fizz. Yeah, so it looks like Apex have sort of returned to something that has worked for them before. Enable Ray to make magic happen. Yeah, exactly. They've got support basically from the other lanes with the Zillion uh, applying the AoE stuns as well as the revive and then all that CC and utility we talked about from the bottom lane here for Apex. Looks like they've got a pretty well-rounded comp. Uh, they are going to be running the double teleports as well. I assume that Bjergsen won't run that teleport even though we have seen a couple Azirs yeah. opt into it. I'm still not a fan uh, even though double TP is so strong in the current meta. I just, he definitely needs that cleanse uh, so he doesn't get locked down. If he can have that DPS uptime, that's all you need for one of those late game team fights. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about this a little bit earlier as well. Bjergsen has been playing so exceptionally well this past weekend. Well, now he's on a huge carry on that Azir. Keen's going to have his work cut out for him. He definitely is. And it's not just going to be a one versus one either, oh, as yeah. we know uh, mm -hmm. in this matchup. Yeah, well, we're almost ready to kick this one off. Send us into the game by tweeting with hashtag TSMWin or hashtag APXWin to shout out who you think will win here in this game one of TSM versus Apex. We've got a very strong lineup between these two. Will TSM continue to the uh, uh, undefeated streak or will Apex be able to take a win off of the cream of the NALCS crop? Well, I'm going to wait to see who's going to be hitting their long-range ultimates in this game before I make that call, because both of these teams have a lot of, while they do have well-rounded team fighting, which is essential. Oh, let's let the chance wash over you. Yeah. <laughs> um, both these teams do have, as we said, you know, some playmaking ability from the bottom lane. Bard is really good at picking people off, uh, as is Ash, obviously, with the arrow. So we'll see how well Apollo's accuracy stacks up to Biofrost's accuracy. Because Biofrost Bard in his debut week was extremely impressive. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all going to be about, you know, these cross map movements uh, trying to affect to all these lanes finish. that are pretty volatile lanes, honestly. Oh, Biofrost, he found him. They were right there over the wall. So he takes a bit of harass from Apollo and Expecial before heading back. He's actually going to have enough time to get a recall as well. And it doesn't, I, I say this preemptively, but it doesn't look like we're going to get a lane swap as everyone is currently on the bottom side of the map. Both Hanser and Ray content to go for that 1v1 top lane. Yeah. It also looks like we're both just going to have them start uh, first camp as well. Yeah. So uh, they should be coming in even. We have seen a couple teams mess up. The early camps, um, but that <laughs> definitely should not be the norm. And I feel like it's very simple uh, on these two. So should be standard starts. And I do enjoy the standard starts immensely because mm -hmm. we get to see more freedom for the junglers. You have so many more options. And that's really the exciting thing about playing jungle is keeping your options open and being able to react to the game uh, you know, as it unfolds. You got to take stock of all the lanes and how they are playing out. And try and manage your health well enough that you uh, can actually act on the opportunities that do present themselves. Yeah. So we do see Shrimp and Svenskaren both going for the double uh, uh, refillable potion. So we'll see if they can effectively manage that. Some basic regeneration already included in the kit of both of those champions, too. Yeah, both those champions are very, very... Uh, it's very easy for them to stay high health in the jungle. Uh, a couple of poke abilities here landing in the bottom lane as they start trading and both junglers look like they will end on the bottom side of the map if you take a look at their routes here kindred shrimp actually decided to pass up the early red buff and that is 
a choice about managing your health and about uh, not using early stacks of his potion. For some reason, he wanted to be on the bottom side of this match uh, map much quicker and at very, very full health. Uh, to try and answer Sven Skarin. I guess the uh, the mark is what drew him over here without going for red buff in. The stun lowers the armor on the crab, makes it very easy to take, and he saves Smite for it. You can see the added priority on yeah. getting these marks for Kindred after the nerfs, because that's where a lot of uh, the makeup damage comes, and you can uh, almost nullify those nerfs early on. So with that, Apex were well prepared. You saw Apollo and X Special shoving in that bottom lane as well to make sure that if the fight were to break out, we could collapse. And they're continuing to harass now. Yeah, it's kind of a dual purpose here where Kindred's going to path down to the bottom early to both support the bottom side, allow bottom to play aggressively. Ash Karma wants to land poke early. They were hitting their skill shots, so uh, they wanted to try and push into turret and deny a little bit of CS. Plus, able to swing down, grab the mark, and uh, as we said, can easily clear the jungle using the passive, uh, not losing any health. And Rek'Sai gets the other Scuttle Crab. So it's double Scuttle traded over for the two. As you can see, Blue Buff, in fact, is going to be gifted over to Bjergsen as Ray completes his first recall. And yeah, teleports back towards that lane. So Sven Skarin being kind enough. Oh, three health, there it goes. Yeah, it doesn't really hurt Rek'Sai at all. Uh, as we've seen a few times, uh, handing over the very early blue buffs. We'll see here because uh, Keen is teleporting back into lane. And uh, ooh, yeah, Shrimp forces Svenskaren to flash. He can't burrow fast enough. Just to... wants to play it safe. Yeah, exactly. We talked about, you know, staying high health. Here goes Ray, though, for some aggressive moves, knowing that the jungler is just chunked out. Uh, he's going to try and push Hanser under that turret as well by himself some time. Ray's also used his teleport, though, so both the solo lanes of Apex using teleports early just for their lane uh, presence. And Hanser already re-harassing him almost out of lane. It's not really going to matter, though, because there's such good control by Shrimp in the jungle. Mm. Already we can see invading, now trying to steal away the Dire Wolves. He does have his, he doesn't actually have his smite, Svenskaren. Oh, he didn't go far enough. Shrimp was able to pull it back out of vision and it resets. Yeah, so the reason he let it reset there is because he wanted to pull it all the way out of vision so they, uh, he couldn't see from the fog of war. Uh, it was a necessary uh, move that he had to make, yeah. Ideally, you want to yeah. stay a little bit closer so the patience doesn't run out on that monster, but didn't want to let uh, Svenskaren see what he was up to and gets off the counter jungle there. Probably going to cost him, though, as Ben Skarin opts for the cross map. Pretty standard answers here uh, mm -hmm. as far as the junglers go. Yeah, so you were talking a little bit about the sort of jungle freedom that's opened up by this as the duo lanes continue to trade it out. Well, so far, we have seen Shrimp moving around the map as much as possible, going for the first invade, in fact. And now he is going to be spotted out by a ward that Sven Skarin has placed, so... A little bit of priority on making sure that those lanes are safe, making sure you've got vision of the other jungler. Yeah, and at this point in the game, that ward actually is just extra gold for Shrimp, so he's pretty happy since his Raptor buff was actually about to time out. Oh, cool, we've got this uh, buff in here. Giving up his position wasn't a big deal. Since he's going to go to mid lane, soak up some more CS, I mean, Shrimp is having a very, very nice uh, early game here on the Kindred. Pretty smooth. The only way it, it gets better than this is if you actually, you know, get those early kills, mm -hmm. which is the dream. But here he goes. He's going to run right through this ward, I believe. We talked about ganking Swain. He doesn't have escapes. Ray's on the Fizz. He can full, uh, fully commit to it, but it looks like it's taking too long. Oh. Sven Skarin finds out. Yeah. Shrimp got caught sightseeing a little bit too long. There goes your pink ward. Uh, but yeah, you could also tell we didn't have the camera on the top lane, but... Um, Ray does kind of have a tendency to, to play super aggressively when he knows he has jungle support and pretty passively when he doesn't. Um, and you can kind of tell just by the little movements uh, and changes in uh, play there from your lane opponent. So Scuttle Crab was just picked up by Shrimp as a consolation prize to the gank that he was looking for, but as he was clearing it, it marked. So that's in fact a second quick mark for Shrimp. Always sick to have that happen. Good feeling for the Kindred. Yeah, TSM. Vision now around the Baron buff. They've got wards all over that side of the map. So it's guaranteed even down there as well. 
that is the Ocean Drake. Not very high priority though, very early on. Yeah, um, I it's actually the best uh, effect on a win rate for early game of all the Drakes. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Ocean Drake has the highest up to like mm, 11 or 12 minutes, I think, uh, effect on win rates as far as the uh, percentage goes. And you can see the difference in priority here. Apex are using most of their wards on top lane because they want to punish that Swain. If you let Swain just fully fizz in the early game, that's where this CS discrepancy is going to come from and start to grow. Um, and they kind of made an effort there, you know, to send some jungle pressure up because, you know, you want to help out the all-in melee champion so he doesn't get bullied but um the opposite end of the spectrum is the force tsm side where they've got words on the bottom side around this ocean drake you know and pressuring into the jungle oh bjergsen catches keen keen that's <laughs> no damage slides on out of there Takes a bit of harass, but manages to keep his cool. And to talk about that a little more, you know, this is Apex, again, playing around Ray. Enable Ray to do awesome things. And so far, he's actually down about 20 CS, and TSM are content to play against him. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, Fizz into Swain matchup is going to be hard if you're alone by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, they did make that a uh, little bit of an effort to head up there a couple times and uh, allow him not to get blasted even harder, I guess. Yeah, he's actually going to look for a bit of harass. Never moved just to soak a bit of damage there. If he can burn the flash uh, all by himself, then that in itself is huge. And that will earn him CS eventually because it will force Hansa to play a bit further back uh, and play a lot more cautiously, allowing Ray to walk up and get those melee executions on the minion. But, you know, no flash burn there. He does go for the all-in. Now without his ultimate, there's very little threat and Hauntzer has to feel pretty secure after healing back up using the new passive on this Catalyst, just spam and spell yeah. play. Such a strong combo on that Swain as Shrimp continues to farm it up. Swain Scarin has been keeping pace on this Rek'Sai despite all of the free time that Shrimp has had to continue to roam around the map. He's actually going to try to head towards the top and cheat into the bush. Yep, he has the Raptor buff as well. You can see the slight lines emanating from the champion there. So he knows for sure there's no ward inside this lane brush. Um, Ray, as we said, though, he doesn't have his ultimate now. So it would have to be a pretty hard commit from Haunter if they were going to take him down. Uh, considering, you know, Haunter does have so much regeneration and, uh, you know, post-level 6 Swain. Decent self-healing. Uh, plus the flash is available, so maybe this is just a flash burn. Ooh, is going to walk right yeah. in. And, yeah, he immediately flashes. All right, well, that's a decent uh, decent use of your time, uh, burning that flash. As we said, that might affect, affect Hunter's play style if Ray can appropriately control the minion wave after. And it looks like Hunter's shoving it, so... Oh, oh they're going to go back, back in. There's a flash from Shrimp, and Hauntzer is first blooded by Ray. Little greedy there from Hauntzer, shoving that wave, but Sven Skarin looks to answer bottom side. Oh, flash from Apollo sidesteps the tempered fate. Double lift is going to drop a culling, but the minions are going to soak a lot of it, and Apollo walks out. Yeah, I think Apollo thought he was in turret range, but... Pop him on the head with that arrow real yeah. quick. Uh, don't come back to my lane. Don't gank me again. <laughs> Meanwhile, top lane, Shrimp with a very effective uh, just duck out into Fog of War. It doesn't even waste any time for the repeat gank. Yeah. Immediately returning after burning that flash. Spence Garen and the rest of TSM, though, trying to answer and get that early game Drake. It's already, you know, kind of approaching the mid game, though. Yeah, so this is the first Drake of the game. Spotted out just in time by Apollo, but secured by TSM 11 and a half minutes in. That's still pretty close yep. to that 11 minute mark that you were talking about. So we'll yeah. see if that actually ends up affecting their win rate at all. It, it is always good. Yeah. Uh, you know, out of combat regeneration is great. Uh, Rek'Sai probably won't have a problem with it anymore though. Um, every dragon does obviously count for the elder dragon true damage, but uh, some convergence on mid lane. Three people from Apex are coming in here. Can he get the slow? Ooh. He cannot. One bomb lands, but can't find the second one. Apex try to make something happen, but couldn't quite find it as Bjergsen dodges out. Marie even roamed down for a bit. He's down about 20 CS in that top lane, but with uh, with that first blood, that's certainly going to feel good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Fizz always kind of comes with uh, an acceptable risk level, uh, yeah. an acceptable CS discrepancy level <laughs> as well. Uh, this is kind of bordering on, you know, you wish you 
a little bit better than that. Uh, but you know, they've they've made efforts, and now that he's got the kill, and he it was a first blood kill to boot. He's feeling real good about his situation. With the cowl, it changes the matchup so much. The regeneration from, you know, small poke now of every spell profiting that extra health regen for you and the built-in magic resist feels really nice. So I don't expect Ray to bleed any more CS. And I think that's about the threshold he's going to try and keep it at. Yeah, we'll keep track on him for that. TSM sending a lot of people bottom. Apollo has no flash. There's the magical journey. Double lift leads the charge. There's no flash this time. Svenskaren and they arrive in time. right up, and there's a stun now onto Svenskaren. Ray turns it around and is knocked up, forced to hop out. Ponser even joined the fight, and that fight is dissuaded. Yeah, a couple people uh, getting a little too close to the fire there, and yeah. everybody backs off. <laughs> Nobody, uh, no harm, no foul, though. Nobody goes down. <laughs> Just like testing the waters <laughs> there from everybody. They actually do burn both teleports, so that came out pretty even, and everybody's just going to calm down after that move. <laughs> TSM saying, be cool, man, be cool. We didn't mean it. Yeah, same for Apollo. He was getting a little bit worried there. Uh, no ult, no flash. Uh, <laughs> gets a bit dicey there as Ash, and you see four people through the magical journey. Yep. Uh, Sven Skarin, you can see clearing out his red buff. In fact, he's managed to catch up in CS, and in fact, past Shrimp just a little bit. It's still even between the two, but Shrimp not quite having a lot of time to look for those marks. He is on his third stack, though. Yeah, feeling pretty good. Uh, you know, past that first phase of the marks. So I'll have to work a little bit harder nowadays. Meanwhile, down bottom, I'm actually quite impressed with uh, Apollo and Expecial. Hmm. Uh, Ash getting up to the point where these arrows can be game-changing. You know, this is the mid-game where the picks really, really count and can provide that big swing. Gold lead right now, really super close. So, uh, you know, you make one meaningful pick with an Ash Arrow, even cross map or something like that, uh, you can start to snowball because all towers stand right now mm -hmm. and it's late in the game. So definitely the, the uh, re damage reduction has dropped off of them and the champions are getting to the point where they can melt through outer turrets. So you get a couple kills, you get some control of one of the sides of the map, you're also going to probably claim tower gold on top of that kill. Shrimp once again heads towards the top side of the map. There's a Got. fish toss from Ray, and Hanser immediately drops into crow form. Shrimp catches up, but Hanser, with his flash, is able to walk towards his turret. A little overzealous from Ray. I, start, I see what you were talking about now. Once he knows that someone's there, he just kind of maybe gets a little too greedy for the kill. Oh, uh, yeah. Need a little uh, coordination. Everybody's got to be right on that, uh, moving at the same time. But it's, it's a really hard because... Uh, yeah. If you he, play too passive, then they'll just leave. Yeah, he can't get real. Uh, Shrimp can't get much closer before the action starts. So, uh, you know, I think Hanser is just in the mode now. He's like, I'm not going to stop bullying this guy. I got my big CS lead over him. Mm -hmm. All's good. You know, that first blood definitely uh, haunting him. Oh, I didn't even mean to do that. No. <laughs> Freak's not even here, man. That's that's okay. Do you move on? He affects all of us sometimes. Keen continues to farm it up in mid, 15, 16 minutes in. So far, it's been a pretty slow game. Since Karen invading, he's going to try to look for some deep vision before this next Cloud Drake spawns, but Trim is already ready with a few wards of his own. Yeah, the wards are going to be really important. I already mentioned, you know, the Ash Arrow possibilities. The Bard picks are just as real for Biofrost. You know, if these guys can get the deep vision down, which right now, TSM uh, is the team that's controlling all of this vision around the Drake. Uh, so they're feeling really good about setting up for the possible skirmish around Drake, even though it is the Cloud Drake, the most lamented of Drakes. Uh, it still is going to stack very nicely, uh, you know, towards the end game there. Yeah, we'll see if either of the teams decide to fight over it as Svenskaren sees Shrimp back off and it immediately invades on the far side. Ray. Continues to take punishment from Hanser. Shrimp finally is going to catch up and be able to secure his Krugs. But Sven Skarin, that's an awfully bold place for him to be. All right. Well, they're going to delay here, the recall. Um, I mean, Dragon's up in 20 seconds, so there's a possibility of trying to make an uh, you know, a play while they know Ray's in base. And if they time their teleport really accurately, they can have the confidence to go for that, but sometimes, you know, you, you're 
fudging a little bit on the numbers there. Hmm, was it quite right when I timed that teleport? This is pretty close. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sven Skarin, in fact, rushed bottom. There's a teleport from Keen completed. He goes face to face with Bjergsen, but it looks like TSM are just going to try to break down this tier one. And I like this preemptive play here. They take out the bottom turret uh, right before the dragon spawns. As we said, they had already done the groundwork of setting up a bunch of vision around this area. And now they've already got a whole, whole bunch of map control. And uh, actually, they're going to recall the bottom lane. So Apex, uh, after the Scuttle Crab, uh, could try and force something. The only problem is Apex didn't have vision of that recall. So not quite sure if they can force it or not. But if they did make the immediate call, they could have burst it down that Cloud Drake. Yeah, it looks like they're going to have to settle for mid and Dragon instead, as Apex are going to be the ones who reap the success of that Dragon Trim. I feel pretty happy about being able to kill that. Cloud Drake number one for Apex. And let's, all right, let's look at, you know, positives of the Cloud Drake. Uh, if, they, <laughs> if an Ash Arrow does hit, the other members of Apex that are running towards that person uh, can close the distance a bit quicker. Uh, so if they do get, you know, one of those long range picks. You, you make Cloud Drake sound like someone trying to set up a blind date. Really, he's great. <laughs> He has a great personality. Cloud Drake does um, have a great personality. <laughs> he's got the fastest attack speed. He's a, yeah. he's a talker. He's an active person. So mobile. If it's a he, I'm not quite sure. It might yeah. be a she. Cloud Drake will chase you down. Fastest move speed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe that's not a great thing to say for setting up a blind date. Yeah, she'll chase you down. <laughs> Woo, okay. Oh, man. He's single, <laughs> ladies. Dom is uh, accepting applications <laughs> at the moment. Speed, definitely a positive. <laughs> okay, 19 minutes <laughs> in. We're Less bringing, than a little bit, yeah. Bringing it back, bringing it back. <laughs> Looks like Apex and a few members towards the top side of the map right now. Ray's on the bottom with teleport, double lift. Oh, interesting uh, uh, shrimp movement here. It's closing in on the top lane. Double lift, there it oh, is. Oh, and the arrow hits double lift. They're able to kill him before he can use anything. Much as I'd like to give some credit to Cloud Drake there, <laughs> he had no part in it. <laughs> Great Asher oh there from Apollo uh, is able to get the low health double lift, and Hunter now is the one with Ray behind him, but nobody else. So he's actually fine, and it's Ray who's kind of trapping himself. Yeah. They would have to get a bunch of people over here right now. Zillion's on the way, but they probably need another person. Yeah. He turns on the Hunter. Keen gets knocked up. They're trying Maybe to burn not. through Hunter. There's a Nevermore. He's down to a third health. There's another bomb, and he oh. flashes and gets out. Oh man, but it's not enough. Ray goes down before the Lamb's respite. Yeah. You set up those bush ganks, and you're like, you know what? We got the advantage. We got the surprise on him. We got. Mm, we only have two teammates. Uh, he's actually have yeah. more health than me. <laughs> so good outplay though from Hanser because it was yeah. actually really close in that skirmish. And the flash over the wall there. Uh, he obviously left the uh, crow on the other side, uh, and ending up with the extra damage there. And he does get the kill on the race. So pretty big outplay from TSM in the two versus two there increases their gold lead. They also have map pressure. So a lot of damage taken here from the mid turret during that time. And Bjergsen stacking up on the Sazir, becoming a very, very threatening mid-game force, even though uh, TSM did get picked off. Pretty good answer right there. And uh, they're wearing away at the turrets as well. So let's take another look. Yeah, so Ray was sitting in that bush the whole time. He was about half-life. And again, it was just going to be the two versus two since they didn't wait for Kindred. Uh, Ray uh, does end up going down just outside that land fight. Oh, so there's close. a fight at the red buff. Big special gets shredded by double lift. Svenskara so now is left far too deep. Ray's actually going to chase through the tunnel and one dodge over one. the side. So it is a one for one trade. Yeah, pretty uh, even skirmish there. But jungler down for uh, support. Let's see if uh, this two versus two actually comes to a head. Shrimp's going to face check the bush, though. Ah, he can do that because <laughs> he's strong. <laughs> Currently 0-2, 100 CS. Feeling pretty strong about himself. Also, uh, I, I'm no, I guess the Ash Arrow is still down from the last pick, so not really a threat of following that up. But Ray's going in on oh, double. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Shrimp is going to follow up. There's a flash. Good stun is going to lock Shrimp down. Teleport completed from Hanser, and suddenly Apex might have gone too deep. There goes the respite, but Ray's not in it. He's going to drop to double lift. Shrimp is forced to back out. The chrono shift is, oh, going to Procky in time. And meanwhile, Apollo is forced to flash the wall. Shrimp, though, will Ooh. go down to Bjergsen. Once again, TSM with an outplay here. They collapse into their own jungle, and that teleport timed with that bard stun right onto the same ward. 
or the wall and the ward right next to each other. Another bunch of kills here for TSM. Starting to run away with the gold lead. And uh, the turrets, again, they're, they're the outer turrets are pretty weak, so they might be soon to fall. This is going to be a, another bush play attempted, possibly from the TSM duo. They get a little bit impatient, don't want to wait around. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to play it safe instead. Apollo charges forward. He's got the arrow, but Doublelift knows it. Holds on to his dash and decides not to overextend for it. And Apollo just takes a bit of damage. And everybody continues to farm it out. Shrimp is actually, Ray, excuse me, is on his way towards that top side of the map. But there's so much vision from TSM. They've got to make sure that this this is clean. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to, you know, make moves like this if you, uh oh! There's the arrow. He gets the turret. Ray They're off the wall. Ray is going to chase from the bottom. Tempered Fate misses. There's the flash and Biofrost is caught. He's going to be gifted over to Apollo and Ray's not done just yet. There he goes. Now he's done. Okay, there's still fighting going on on the top side, though. Yeah, Shrimp really going in on Sven. Keen takes a lot of damage as Sven Skarin and Bjergsen trade it back. Try to collapse on Apex as they're heading towards the top lane, but they don't get any kills. Yeah, they defend the flank here of the three people who were diving on the duo lane. Apex do get the kill uh, and successful extraction mission as well. Desperate uh, teleport here to try and save the turret. I don't know if it's going to work, though. I don't think so. Ooh. Barely misses the minions, and unfortunately, it's not enough. The turret goes down, and Bjergsen says, this was yours? No, this is mine now. <laughs> Classic Bjergsen versus Keen. Yeah. <laughs> stealing the Urgot counter, stealing his mid turret. And the Zillion. True enough. Oh, man. And all, it's it blue buff, back. too. Oh. All your base belongs to Keen. <laughs> eh, that was close enough. All right, but TSM, I have to say the one consistent thing that's been throughout almost entirety of the last 20 minutes has been the ward control for them. Uh, and they've really had the first step here on Apex. This dragon, as, or Drake as well, is going to go over to them. And the vision game has been very top-centric for Apex, and that has not paid off. They weren't able to make the early moves up top work, uh, and the late moves here haven't worked either because, uh, I mean, I guess they get this kill, but it's the extended chase uh, that does get turned around. So here it is, the kill on the Biofrost. He's going to take that fish for double lift. What a support, and there's going to be that kill. Double up does end up getting away, but you know what happens afterwards. Oh my goodness, wow. this is a very, very early Baron. That's going to deal a lot of damage. You don't have anyone strong tanking it. In vision so as well. So you're going to have to run. Apex back Here away. Bard. Bard can pick somebody off. Then Scarin gets the knock up onto Ray, but he hops over the wall. There's a chilling smite. Culling is going to do some good damage. Oh, there's the chrono shift. Ray doesn't have his flash. The Nevermore. Never move is not going to be able to lock him down. Yeah, TSM extend forward, and they're able to burn a few big abilities, but now they might be looking for this tier two. Yep, they've got the minion waves moving up the mid lane. Sven Skarin taking a little bit of damage, but I think TSM can actually just take this time to shore up that vision game on the top side. You know, there's a few wards that Apex were able to get down there in the meantime. Uh, they might want to clean that up a little bit. There goes one, double takes out. Um, but they need True Sight for that extra line. Mm -hmm. Once again, the vision for TSM is just so strong. Sightstone first on Sven Skarin. Just patrolling the map left and right. Keep an eye on Shrimp. Keep an eye on potential ganked gank paths. Bjergsen double lift. Oh, man. Bjergsen is able to land it. There's the chrono shift on cooldown, but there are four members of TSM. He flashes, and he's in fact going to be able to make it out. Double bomb on the double lift. Is it going to be enough to kill him? I'm not quite sure. Yes, Keen is going to get it. There's the never moving shrimp. Drop the respite. Apex are able to turn this around and get out. Ooh. Oh, except for Apollo. Yeah, he was at the back, too. He didn't notice that sneaky little soldier. <laughs> I guess he blended in with the background yeah. there. It's Bjergsen's got the secret agent soldiers for <laughs> his ear. And they take down Apollo. That's also, that's a really big kill, actually, because that allows TSM to make this transition up to topside, and that might be the last outer turret for them. Apex looking to try and cut off Bjergsen, though. Yeah, Sven Skarin trying to run bodyguard, keep Apex off the turrets. Ray rushes forward, and yes, it looks like TSM are going to have to back away. Ray gets caught by a snare. Never move. He's going to find Shrimp, as that's actually the tempered fate. Sven Skarin looks to dive. Flash by Shrimp. Ray is trying to shred through Hunter, but he's already got a Zonius. There's a chrono shift onto Ray. Will he be able to come back up and look for another oh. one? No, the journey out to safety. Biofrost with the escape hatch. Magical journey. Everyone out the backside. 
mission aborted and everyone was able to live as well. Woo. Yeah, so uh, before this game, we were talking a lot about how TSM have the fastest win time right now in the NALCS. Mm -hmm. Well, this game, they're taking a much slower pace. Yeah, they do have about six minutes or so to uh, get that <laughs> average time. Here comes the Bjergsen play, though. Isolating Keen, he does have flash for right when he gets back up, and the rest of the time, uh, the rest of the team was able to join in that time, but Bjergsen, as we said, or double up got double bombed, and he's out. Let's take a look at Apollo's positioning here. Where does the soldier hide? It looks like he's hovering on the edge, and then he just walks into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, hold it. that soldier just hiding in plain sight, standing still. <laughs> Apollo can't see you if you stand still. Little known fact, Apollo is a T-Rex. Yep. <laughs> Can't see if they can't move. So it's Garen now going to clear out the Scuttle Crab as Apex. 4,000 gold behind TSM, but even in kills as TSM are continuing to encroach on Apex's territory. Trying to make these plays happen more and more. Well, they return to the top side, and finally, they will be able to knock down that turret. There's the extra glo uh, gold they're looking for, as well as the ability, the crucial ability to move their ward line up all the way through both quadrants of Apex Jungle. Uh, TSM, they've been at the walls here uh, as far as Apex territory, and now they can move in. They can try and bait this Baron. Pink ward inside will allow them. Uh, it kind of forces the move here from Apex. Yeah, they're trying to sneak it right now. Doesn't look, yeah, it's just spotted out by Apollo. Here comes the rest of Apex. Spray has his teleport as well. Arrow is gonna find double lift, but there's no follow-up. The rest of TSM turn on to Keen. There's a tempered oh fate, and TSM have found an amazing fight. Keen on top of the rest, but Ray doesn't even hop over the wall. They clean up one. Now that's two. Ray is in the back, but there's no one that he can turn on to as TSM might have been off, but there they go. Finally able to drop Apollo and X Special. This is a surgical cleanup, and Bjergsen gets a solo kill on Ray. What a tragedy for Apex there. Oh my goodness, they were split, and Biofrost has a great Bard ultimate. Pretty big pick there for TSM on Keen at the same time, and that was very, very clean. That might be them pushing towards that average game time, Dom. Yeah. Trying to hit that almost 34 minute mark, but boom, there it is. They go in on Keen at the same time, trap both Apollo and Shrimp. Then there's no escaping from this, because CSM, they're all together. That team fight is so, so, I don't know, it's just clean from them. They're all yeah. right next to each other, and Apex are the ones that are split up. Ray's bouncing around the backside, and they cannot recover from it. Yeah, just a little bit too slow from Apex to really recover. and. Catch now with the Baron buff. Bjergsen once again gonna steal away Keen's blue buff. That's oh, Spencer Karen got the auto attack. To the that's last one of those things where it's a very rare that I side uh, against the jungler, but you're a full damage Rek'Sai. You're not helping, but to con <laughs> continuing to attack that blue buff. Bjergsen on the Azir at this point is like, pretty sure I got this taken care of. Yeah. Just stand there, bud. <laughs> I don't need your auto attack that has no extra. <laughs> Attack 60, damage 80, on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Ocean Drake just got secured by TSM. That is, oh no, that was a Cloud Drake. Secured by TSM. And now TSM are going to shove down the mid lane. This tier two turret is destroyed. They've got three minutes now to try to end the game. To hit before, that average game time before, before they increase. Before it. they bring shame onto the TSM <laughs> yes. family name. Well, they're doing pretty well so far. Two tier two turrets have gone, and they got that third dragon. Well, remember also, that's just the average game time that they had. So they had games above above that uh, time. Looking to lower it here, though, as they've got two lanes pushed up with Baron buff. They even sent Haunter back with teleport, so it's going to clean up the third lane as well. Three lanes of income. They're also pressuring inhibitor turrets. Uh, huge gold lead, so barring a very, very big mistake from TSM, uh, Apex actually need to just go for you know some Hail Mary move, all in kind of. Uh, Ash Arrow, first person they see, and just try and all mob on Bjergsen or something. Yeah, Apollo's been landing some good arrows onto Double Lift this entire game, pretty much through TSM's team fight. So the question is, can he find Double Lift? Can he find Bjergsen before TSM take all of the Tier 2 turrets? Two of them are down, the third one's about to fall. But there is no answer for Apex so far. 32 minutes in, we've got a minute and 30 seconds. 
for TSM to try to push forward. It might be the Hail Mary that gives TSM that average game. Score. Well, they've got a lot of wards behind them. Look at how ridiculous it is on the bottom quadrant. They see Ray doing the Gromp. So even if Ray started channeling teleport, they'd be all right with it. Ooh. Oh, Tempered Fate finds Apollo. He's got no summoner spells. There's a Chrono Shift to keep him alive. And Hanser going to continue zoning forward. Apollo goes dead. There goes the Lamb's Respite. And almost on the clock, TSM turn it on. Bjergsen gets a double kill. They're going to zone the rest. A huge bomb from Keen is enough to buy some time as Ray and Keen run into the base. Bjergsen with a triple kill in the fountain. But TSM have got a wave of minions. They've still got the Baron buff. They're going to look to take this game against Apex. TSM looking pretty hot right now, Dom. This game over, under the average game time. Congratulations. <laughs> they lower it by a few seconds, and they take down Apex in the first game. This is a best of three, though. Remember, yeah. new North American LCS. Uh, we go best of threes for everybody. So Apex, they still have a chance to turn this around, regroup after the first game, uh, and try and come back with a new strategy in game two. Yeah, we, ha we did see them adapt yesterday against Envy in their game, too. So we'll see if they can pull it out once again. As right now, TSM undefeated five games in a row, five wins in a row in the North American LCS. Purely undefeated. Yes. Right. Not just the series play and match play as yeah. well. Uh, definitely looking very good at the start of this season. Yeah, very strong performance from TSM. And, you know, they took their time. They were so patient. I got to admit, I was concerned that they were going to go over their average game time. And then they got to the 29-minute mark and they were like, here. oh, wait, we got to hit this number. And they then they did. It was so clean. Well done. You reminded them. I did. I did. But Apex, on the other hand, they're again, they have their work cut out for them. How can they possibly adapt against a team that hasn't lost? We haven't seen a lot of weaknesses from TSM. That's yet. what people are saying last split against Immortals. And uh, it took yeah. many, many weeks, uh, maybe week seven or eight or something, for CLG to actually finally take a game off them. Now we kind of have to watch the same thing with TSM. How long will it be before some team takes a game off of TSM? As of right now, Apex, um, you can see kind of their play style, you know, the decision making there. They had a lot of wards on top. They obviously wanted to play around top, but they could not convert yeah. on the all or nothing here. You know, it's a melee champion versus Swain. Swain's going to bully him if they're left alone and they try and get some jungler intervention to, you know, get some power on that side of the map. But after that was stopped by TSM, it was pretty good counter movements uh, from TSM on almost all of the initiations from Apex. Yeah, TSM moved pretty safe throughout that mid game, but now TSM wins in a big way after a series of huge team fights. To catch us up on all of the LCS